Hello, now we will discuss derivative as a rate of change. Our learning objectives are instantaneous rate of change and we will discuss motion along a line. So here's a definition of rate of change, which is also called instantaneous rate of change. So it's the rate of change of f of some function with respect to x at x0 is nothing but a derivative of the function at x0. Uh, if you remember, uh, in, in derivative can be interpreted in two different ways. The first one is a geometric interpretation where we realize derivative as a slope and the second interpretation was realizing derivative as an instantaneous rate of change. So indeed, that's what we are doing now. Let us do an example. Given area of a circle in terms of the, its diameter, we would like to find how fast does the area change with respect to the diameter when the diameter is 10 meters. So whenever it says how fast it is changing, that's exactly what is meant by rate of change. And with respect to diameter, so if you remember, uh, it means I need to take the derivative of the area with respect to D. So rephrasing the question, we would like to find out derivative of A with respect to derivative of D when D is equal to 10 meters, right? So that's what we want. Well, what do we do? We have a equal to pi over 4 d squared, so that's given. Let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to capital D, which is diameter. Then what happens? On the, on the left, that's the quantity we'd like to find. On, what do we see on the right? We have pi over 4, which is constant, so we could take it out. And then we are left with derivative of d square. And we would like to take the derivative of d square with respect to d. So this is like taking derivative of x square with respect to x, which is, by power rule, 2x. Hence, here we would get 2 times d, which means we get pi over 2 times d. Now we would like to find out uh, what happens, uh, how fast it is changing when uh, d equal to 10. So we substitute d equal to 10. Then the answer would be pi over 2 times 10. So this is 5 pi. So when uh, diameter equal to 10, the rate of change of the area is 5 times pi. Now let's discuss motion along a line. We will define uh, displacement, we will define average velocity and the velocity and acceleration. We will give uh, an, an example. Let's say that uh, my object is located at position S at time t. And uh, after delta t time period, uh, let's say that it's at this position given uh, here, which is s plus delta s. So this uh, change in, in the position, which is delta s, is uh, what we call displacement. So that's the definition of displacement. If my uh, s is given in terms of a function f, which is, which is time dependent, then I can define the displacement as uh, the, the position at F, uh, position at t plus delta t minus the position at t. And what is the average uh, velocity? Well, average velocity is displacement divided by uh, the time traveled. So delta s over delta t. As you can see, this is uh, this resembles the definition of a derivative. What is the velocity? Well, velocity is 
uh, it's the derivative of the displacement which as you can see the the limit of the average velocity where delta t goes to zero which is also called instantaneous and the next what is the speed what is the difference between velocity and speed well velocity uh, contains more information for example velocity could be negative so negative five meter per second means the object is moving to the left minus means to the left uh, plus means to the right uh, how however what is the speed speed we always regard it as non-negative uh, as our speedometer of the car shows it's never negative so it's nothing but uh, the absolute value of the velocity so in particular uh, if the car car's velocity is minus five then the speed would be five if the car's velocity is five it would the, the speed would also be five and uh, what is the acceleration well acceleration is the instantaneous of instantaneous rate of change of velocity with respect to time so it's the derivative of the velocity but what was the velocity velocity is the derivative of the displacement hence acceleration can be also found as an second derivative of displacement now let's do one example figure on the right illustrates the free fall of a heavy ball bearing released from rest at time t equal to zero which means at time t equal to zero the velocity was also zero and then it was simply released and the first question is we would like to find out uh, where where the ball is at uh, t equal to three so we are regarding the t equal to zero as the the coordinate zero okay uh, we're, we're not going to do any physics so instead i will give the function uh, that gives the position right the formula for the position which is s is equal to 4.9 t square so then the answer for the first one would be s of 3 which is 4.9 t square so this is 4.9 times 9 which is equal to 44.1 meters the next we'd like to find velocity what was the velocity velocity was the derivative of the displacement so this is nothing but uh, at, at time t so v, v of 3 is uh, s prime of 3 so i need to take the derivative of s which is 4.9 times 2 times t where t is equal to 3 which gives us um, 29.4 meter per second well what would be the speed uh, speed is so speed at t equal to 3 is nothing but the absolute value of the velocity but since we regarded the the falling direction as positive this is already positive so the speed is also uh, 29.4 meter per second now how about the acceleration well acceleration is the derivative of the velocity at 3 we already computed the derivative so of the velo what was the velocity well uh, velocity was um, 4.9 times 2 times t right so this is 4.9 times 2t derivative and then i need to take take t equal to 3 so if you take the derivative of t which is 1 hence this is simply 2 times 4.9 and the time t equal to 3 is not important because this is simply a constant hence we, we get 9.8 meter per second squared which is the gravita gravitational force no surprise 